How's it going guys, it's Ran here, and welcome to my high level Bando solo guide for both EOC and Legacy. Uh, so first off, uh, Bestiary, what's up with the Bando's boss? So the Bando's boss has a combat level of 210, 40,000 life points, has a max hit of 3,250 with melee, although usually hits much much lower than that, uh, has an attack speed or attack interval of 3.6 seconds, and attacks with melee and range. Uh, the Bando's boss is weak to nothing. Okay, so the Bando's boss has three minions listed below. They're all level 146, and they each use a different part of the combat triangle. They all have 5,475 life points and max hits of 365 each. Uh, so to a high-level player, they're not much of a problem. Uh, now, I'm going to talk about requirements. Now, these requirements look awfully high for Bandos, and I would agree completely. Uh, that's because I'm going to be going over some high-level setups and high-level methods. If you don't meet these requirements but want to go to Bandos, uh, you can totally do it. Uh, and I've actually got a low-level guide that I will link in description and put a link on screen right now. So if you don't fit most of these requirements, uh, you can click there to see a different guide. Uh, but you're going to want 90-plus attack, strength, and defense, 95-plus prayer, I completed Edgar's Ruse for the Trollheim Teleport spell, uh, and I actually recommend you have 96 plus Summoning, 96 plus Herblore, uh, and a 10 minute or higher Grave, uh, or Signs of Respite from Divination. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to get there. Okay, so this is how you're going to get there. Once you've geared and you're all set up in every way possible, uh, what you're going to want to do is you want to break a Trollheim tablet if that's how you're going to get there, or you can use the Teleport to Trollheim spell. Uh, however you want to do it, get up to the Trollheim. You can even use the God Wars Dungeon Teleport spell if you have that available to you. Uh, and then you're just going to go as I go. Okay, so while we're running to the God Wars Dungeon, I thought I'd take a second to talk about Godly Protection. Uh, so in the God Wars Dungeon, if you have a piece of equipment equipped of the faction uh, that you're going to be up against, uh, basically it means that that faction's monsters will not be aggressive to you. So for example, uh, if you wore a Bando's chestplate, uh, then the Bando's followers in God Wars wouldn't be aggressive towards you, which is very helpful for kill count so you don't get piled. Uh, now, if you have any of the Ancient Warriors armor, which is Torva, Virtus, or Pernix, uh, that also works and it actually protects you against all factions. Uh, but if you're not using any Ancient Warriors equipment, uh, either bring a Shard of Zaros or make sure you've got a Bando's item on you. Okay, so to enter the Bando's stronghold, you need to kill 40 Bando's followers, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, so for the kill count, the best way to do this is actually to hop onto the EOC combat mode, uh, and then from that point, basically what you do is you just run around and killing all things Bandos, uh, that includes goblins, hobblegoblins, orcs, orgs, ogres, and those such types of monsters. And yeah, you need to get to 40 kill count uh, to bang the big door, and then once you bang the big door, uh, you just run to the Bando stronghold and you're ready to begin your Bandos trip. Okay, so now, this is kind of a, an age-old question, but what mode do you want to use? Uh, so Legacy, the pros are it's simple and it's semi-AFK, uh, and the pros for ESC is much faster, uh, it's more click-intensive, uh, but you also have healing abilities. Uh, so, kind of, EOC definitely outweighs, outweighs Legacy at a boss like Bandos. It's much more efficient to use EOC. Your kill speeds will be pretty much doubled, uh, and you'll use a lot less food, which will make your trips longer. Uh, but that being said, Legacy works too, and I'll show you guys kills for both of those after we go through the gear stuff. Uh, so into the gear setup, basically you want to use the highest tiered armor you can in the combat style you're using, and I recommend you use melee. Uh, the reason I recommend you use melee is just because of the combat triangle. The Bandos boss attacks with melee and ranged, uh, so melee is the best way to defend against both those combat styles. Uh, that being said, as a high level player, if you want to use range or mage, uh, that works too, uh, but I've only included gearing for melee. Uh, that being said, uh, every single piece of gear I've included in here is either type all or it has an equivalent for range and mage. So, for example, if you see Tetsu, uh, on my melee gear list. If you want to use mage, that would be Sea Singers, which is just the exact same but for mage. Uh, so now you want to use the strongest two-handed weapon or dual wield you have as well, so the highest tier, and I'd actually recommend using a dual wield uh, just because the abilities are better, but whatever you have. Okay, so now into armor. Obviously, I'm not going to read through everything, but you can just kind of pause through it. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the only kind of strange one is, actually, I would put Torva here, uh, above Tetsu, and that's because as a high level player you don't need the tankiness as much and the damage bonus from the Torva is extremely helpful. Aside from that, the Blood Necklace is a massive recommendation. It's absolutely amazing at Bandos and you save a ton of food. Um, and really, the Ring of Vigor, you only want a Ring of Vigor if you're planning on using Berserk at the start of every kill. 
Uh, so that's about it as things that I want to highlight uh, in terms of armor setup. Uh, so yeah, now we're going to move on to weapon setup. Uh, basically, it's pretty pretty easy. <laughs> Drygores to Noxious to Katanas, which would be Ports Weaponry, uh, then Chaotix, then Godsword, Sarah Godsword, then Bandos, then Arma, and then Zami. Uh, so that's kind of a gear setup for weapons. That's not every weapon in the game, uh, but like I said before, highest tier is better. Uh, and a note there, the new level 85 weapons are coming out. They're not out when I'm recording this, but they will be in a couple weeks. When they do, they'll be above Chaotix and likely tied with Katanas. So just <laughs> to note that I am going to be missing those when they come out, because I don't know what they're called. Okay, so now into your inventory setup. Uh, quick disclaimer, you need to do a couple trips before you figure out your ideal inventory setup. Uh, but I will show you mine in a little bit. Uh, but pretty much, if you go on a trip and you find you have extra prayer at the end, swap out some prayer potions for food, uh, for example. But it's just a balancing act and figuring out with your specific gear what you're going to run out with first. Uh, run out of first. Uh, so sharks are highlighted here because I recommend them because they're relatively cheap. Uh, otherwise, you can also use brews if you want. Uh, they're quite decent. I know they're not on this list, but they're also quite good. Uh, Rocktail soup and rocktails, don't use those. It's just it's, it's kind of overkill at this point. Uh, now, in terms of stat boosting potions, it's pretty simple. Supreme overloads, then overloads, then extremes. Um, <laughs> pretty pretty simple there. Uh, in terms of other potions, prayer renewals are always good. Uh, just, just remember, if you're bringing prayer potions, make sure you've got a couple super restores on you uh, so that when your familiars die, you can renew them because the super restore restores prayer as well as summoning points. Uh, now, into familiars and prayers, a uh, yak is better than a tortoise, which is better than a unicorn. A steel titan is also an option, but it makes your trip slower, and it doesn't speed up your kills that much, because your kills are going to be well under 20 seconds anyway, uh, so it doesn't matter that much to bring a steel titan. So I'd strongly recommend a yak, mostly because you can actually bank away all of your drops. And now, in terms of prayers, soul split is better than protect from melee. Anything other than that, you probably don't want to be using. And then in terms of prayers, turmoil is better than piety. Uh, now I'm going to show you guys a legacy kill as well as an EOC kill, and that's going to happen right now. Okay, before we kick off the legacy kill, I thought I'd just go over my gear setup for this video. So as you can see in my pack yak, I got some food, some prayer potions, some extra pack yak pouches, some super restores to keep my summoning points up. And then in my inlet, we've got supreme overloads and prayer renewals, some brews, and AGS is just my spec weapon for the legacy kill. And yeah, that's my setup. Okay, so when you're ready to go, make sure you turn on your aura, uh, pot up. Set your quick prayers to turmoil, protect item, uh, as well as soul split. And basically, you're going in and attacking the boss. Now, some specifics for a legacy kill. Uh, first off, you're going to unload your spec as soon as you possibly can. As you can see, you can get some pretty badass hits. Um, but some specifics for the legacy kill. Uh, well, it's relatively AFK. You shouldn't be using too much food, but you'll be using a lot more than an EOC kill, and the kill will take quite a bit longer. This was a slow kill for legacy, but they are generally quite slow. Uh, now, something you can do in your invent to make the legacy uh, set up a little bit better is if you want to put a set of guthans in your invent to heal up on the minions after the main boss is dead, uh, you can do that. I've seen people do that, and it works all right. Um, so yeah, if you're actually considering going with legacy, you might want to try that out if you find that your trips aren't long enough because you're running out of food. Okay, so now I'm going to show you two different EOC kills uh, with two different strategies. The first strategy, you're starting from zero adrenaline, uh, and you're basically working up to thresholds, and you're going to use them. And the ones you're going to want to go to are generally assault and destroy. Um, so that's going to be this kill that you're watching right now. And I'll put a little timer up on screen so you guys get an idea on how long this kill takes. Now, if you're planning on doing it the other way, basically you use Anticipation, Freedom, and then uh, Surge or Escape to basically hold your Adrenaline up. And the point of this is so that you can pop off a Berserk as soon as the kill starts. Uh, so this is where you'd want to ring a Vigor if you can, and maybe even an Adrenaline Potion. But the timer's up here, and you'll just see uh, this is another strategy that uh, some people like to do. I actually don't prefer this strategy, uh, because even though the kills are faster, you can't really heal up between the kills with your Adrenaline. Uh, so I don't actually like it as much, but... Uh, the kills are very, very quick, uh, so it's kind of a trade-off there. You can kind of pick and choose how you want to do it. Uh, but yeah, those are the three different ways you can kill the Bandos boss. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the notable drops. Uh, stuff that's over one mil, you've got your Bandos, chest plates, tassets, helmets, boots, and gloves. And I'm actually not too sure about the helmets right now. They might be a little bit under a mil, uh, but either way, they're around that ballpark. Uh, stuff that's under one mil, you've got your Bandos war shields and your Bandos hilts. 
uh, Hard and Elite Clue Scrolls, as well as War Priest of Bandos gear. So those are the drops you can get from this boss. Uh, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me via YouTube PM, uh, put them in the comment section down below, or you can even go into my friends chat or even guest in my clan chat if you wanted to ask me questions. Uh, my runescape name is the RS Guy, uh, and feel free to subscribe for more guides. Uh, to join my clan, like I said before, you can guest in the RS Guy's clan chat channel, and someone on will be sure to give you an ad and a warm, warm welcome. So anyway, guys, have a good one. Peace out, and I hope this was helpful. Both EOC and Legacy. Uh, so first off, we're going to talk about what the f***.